So I like to use a little name, same claim to fame. It's a little icebreaker. This is what I use at networking meetings and whenever I have to meet somebody for the first time. Really short little way of introducing yourself to say who you are. So it's your name. I'm Gary Robinson. The same the category that everybody wants to put me in, which is probably digital marketing, I'm actually a sales copywriter, claim to fame. My claim to fame is I help coaches sell more coaching programs. Gone a little bit conservative today with the claim to fame. I could tell you all sorts of interesting ones, but I want to keep it relevant today. You came here today because you want to get more leads or referrals for your business. Um, you probably knew that I'm in a digital market. Um, so I think given that we're all here to get leads, there's, there's, there was a reason why you joined this. There's maybe some information you're looking for, or there's some strategies or secrets that I'm going to, I'm definitely going to share, but I really want to focus on the, the problems or the frustrations or the problems that you're having generating leads online or generating, um, referrals online. So why referrals? Yeah. The, the problems that people have with digital marketing, it's, it's really frustrating. Every, every coach we meet, every small business owner we meet, they hate marketing or they, they start off going, oh, I think I need to do marketing. It always goes wrong for them or they always get frustrated by it in some way. What we find is it normally falls into like three buckets. It's really costly or expensive. Like this, they start spending more money than they actually get back out of it. So that's bad enough on its own. Next thing is it gets really complicated really quickly, especially if you start hooking up funnels and CRM systems and email follow-ups, or you start like having to write content and where do you put it and which platforms do you use? You go on different social media platforms. One of the third things which we're finding more and more common these days, ironically, despite ChatGPT, is that it's confusing. A lot of our clients tell us, we just don't know what to say. We can't find the right words at the right time to say to the right people, if, if we can even find the right people. So it's confusing, you know, how to find people. What do you say to them when you meet them? At what time do you say the right thing? You know, do, do I pitch too soon? Will I put people off? Am I going to be too pushy? Or am I going to be too passive and then miss out on sales because of that? So confusing. So the work we've been doing with coaches, especially in small agency owners, we've been engineering referrals for them because we know that one referral is worth at least a hundred leads. Doing traditional digital marketing in terms of list building, you put some ads on Facebook. We used to work in batches of like a hundred leads at a time and put them through a funnel, you know, middle of funnel stuff. You'd get it down to maybe like 30 people and then you'd get a few sales calls, maybe five, 10 people. In the end, you'd get like one or two sales out of that funnel. So a batch of a hundred leads or email addresses generated on by ads or social media or whatever makes one sale. That's why it's costly. That's why it's complicated and knowing what to say at each stage of the funnel makes it confusing. So instead we wanted to know that most of our clients are earning less or doing less than a million dollars a year. Um, they can't afford to be spending tens of thousands of dollars a month on advertising. So whatever we do has to be profitable for them. And of course, us as an agency it has to be simple. So you don't want to be bothering with all the tech and all the nonsense and the confusion. And it has to be fun. Most of the people we work with are lifestyle businesses. We're not, not a transactional, as you'll you, you see in a second. And um, we want to have fun running our businesses. Some of the common pitfalls we see people doing and where we get held up. Number one is list building. If you're earning less than a million dollars in profit a year, you don't need to be building your own list. You can get to a million dollars a year pretty quickly by doing word of mouth and referrals. Most of the time people will say that's great, but it's not scalable for a business. And it's true. What I'm going to talk to you here about is not for businesses, it's for practices. And I'll explain the difference in just a sec. But basically, if you're list building right now, just know that you don't need to do it. If you're spending loads of time on social media, doing content marketing, trying to create blog posts every week and posts every day, it's too much work for someone if you're doing most of the work in your practice. Similarly, with the whole funnel hacking thing and funnel building thing, yes, it's great, super scalable. You can get the two comma club, four comma club, whatever, click funnels rewards people for doing multi-million dollar funnels. But basically, again, that's a business marketing strategy. So that whole thing with lead magnets and order bumps and upsells and downsells, cross sells, you can make lots of money doing that. It's a different type of marketing. It's a different type of business and it's very complicated. It's too much work for one person to do on their own, even if they've got a marketing assistant. And finally, like when all that fails, we resort to cold calling or networking, BNI groups, hitting the phones, hitting the LinkedIn chats, messenger sell by chat stuff that coaches are into these days and basically hustle which gives you big black panda eyes and no sleep and makes is very unhealthy that's not fun that's why i said you you want something that that makes it fun so reassuring really to know that if you are have been doing that sort of business, business generate lead generation strategies that it's not really necessary you don't have to do it and there's there's better simpler more fun ways to bring another point out is the confusing thing about not knowing what to say the fourth biggest sort of mistake or pitfall if you like is just not having a very specific idea about who you target marketing is and I, 
I want to use one of my clients as a case study. They're not a coach, but they were uh, an air conditioning contractor. There's some work I did last year, which is one of the most successful pieces we did. They were basically air condition service engineers. So they'd go around to people's homes and fix their broken air conditioners. They'd get really busy in summer because people would neglect it. And, you know, they're, going, they're doing the usual advertising on Facebook, putting free offers on there, spending a lot of money, not really getting anywhere. And I underlined here the, the reason. This, this was their offer when, they, when we started working them. I was like, it doesn't make sense. I get that you're doing air conditioning. It says they're residential or commercial. You do installations, you do maintenance, you do repairs. It was all confusing. The call to action was really vague. Like, contact this. What does that mean? When you click the button, it pops up a big form and I've got to put all my details in. It was a bit of a nightmare. And I was like, no wonder this isn't working. It's costing you money. Not only are you confused about who you're serving, your clients are confused. It doesn't look like you're a specialist in anything. So we changed it up a little bit after, after we worked with them. We, we identified that probably commercial property managers was the best, most profitable jobs for them. So we just simplified the message, made it really simple with one offer. Just avoid the cost in case of an unexpected aircon breakdown. We suddenly started talking to commercial property managers because they were the best clients for my client. And the offer we put in, I don't know if you can read it, it says, call us to arrange a complimentary assessment of your client's air conditioning installation. So it was an invitation to make a referral. So they wanted the commercial property managers to refer their clients to the aircon contractor. And the call action was really clear. It's call now. And there's the number even. You can just type it in. Once they stopped the list building and the Facebook ads, they immediately saved $2,000 a month in ad spend. They only had to target 50 commercial property managers in the area that they were working in. Every single one of them sent a referral within that year. So they got 50 referrals. Actually, some would send two, but they got 50 referrals out of that list of 50 people within a year. Didn't cost them $2,000 a month. What was that? $24,000 a year for the marketing campaign. You know, I couldn't, I, want, I could have used an example as a coach, but Coaches serve, always serve different markets. So I just wanted something that everybody could understand here. So a few of the principles. So when you're building a business, you use other people's money. Or if you're going to build a house, you don't go down to Bunnings and buy a couple of bricks and then come back and lay them and then go do the same the next day and then, you know, build it as you go and then go back, buy a door, put that in. Take, it would take forever to build a house if you were going to build your own list, build your own house. No, you use other people's money. You go to the bank and say, give me a whole bunch of money and I'll get, I'll get all the contractors and I'll get the thing built. So the key principle, if you're going to generate referrals online, is to use other people's lists. There are people out there who already have your clients. Why do you need to build one list of your own clients when you could go to 10 people who already have all your clients? So the first principle, I guess, you want to start thinking about is, yeah, use other people's lists. There's things you'd have to do if you wanted to do that, which gets onto this, which is the whole give us gain principle. Business is really simple. Running a practice is really simple. You can get what you want by helping other people get what they want. So in the case of our air conditioning contract, a friend, they knew they could help commercial property managers get what they want by helping their clients by doing their job. So the commercial property managers experience a lot of pain if a building's air conditioning broke down in summer. They'd have to shut the building down and send people home. Really painful for them. All my client was doing was going to them and saying, hey, you don't have to have that problem. We'll make sure you don't get that problem. As long as you refer your clients to us, it's all good. And the next principle is just like why people refer. Why we do anything is just to feel good. When you see people trying to bribe people with referral offers, like I'll give you an iPad if you refer your clients to us or when you go to the hairdresser and they're given discounts, people don't refer for that. They refer because they actually like what you do and they want other people to experience that in the meantime. So bear those three things in mind. We can start approaching marketing a little bit differently. Here's the big distinction, right? I think, and it doesn't matter if you're an air conditioning contractor, if you're a tradie, if you're a coach, if you're a speaker, an author, basically if you're running a business that's based around you and a couple of people are working for you, you probably would have what I would call a practice. Practice is marketed differently to businesses. So just a few differences between a business and a practice in respect to this. We can talk all day about what the government thinks a business is, but there isn't a category for a practice in the ASIC register. You're either a business or you've got a job, but there's this different type of business that I call a practice. And the difference is that a traditional business is built to sell. So you'd cash out at some point. I'm going to do this for five years and I'm going to sell the thing and then I'm going to make my money. Whereas a practice is built to support a lifestyle, something that maybe you love doing and you want to do for the rest of your life. So you just get cash in from doing it. Business, its main assets are systems and staff. So the business owner is well out of it or there should be, otherwise they can't sell it. 
in which case you know they or they'll be tied into like some sort of continuity thing where they have to go so systems and stuff the biggest asset in a practice the owner's expertise is the biggest asset business low profit margins very low profit margins compared to a practice which has very high profit margins coaches are, pro are probably doing at least 80 percent profit whereas a school is probably doing like 10 percent profit you know they're, they're, they're very very different business models and that's because businesses are transactional they've got customers practices are relational we have clients that we work with and have relationships with and crucially really the point i want to make is that a business to grow will probably employ tactics like list building funnel hacking and cold calling with a sales force to do lots of transactions a practice traditionally if you think about traditional practices like chiropractors and doctors they're all on referrals and recommendations. Practice owners spend a lot of time working in their business. That's why we do it. We love it. 80% of my time I spend writing copy. I want to practice. Top chiropractors, they're spending 80% of their time doing adjustments. Even like if you think of the really top earning like surgeons, brain surgeons and knee surgeons, like they still do all the work and they always will. The whole business is based on their expertise. And what we do is we build a support team around us so that we can just turn up and do our work. That was a distinction I learned when I was serving fitness coaches. All fitness coaches want to do is get up in the morning, look in their diary and go, who am I training today? They don't want to worry about building lists and writing content. Most of us just want to do our job. If you're a knee surgeon, you want to be fixing people's knees. So if you just try that, that idea on, suddenly we'll approach what we do very differently. So this one's for the coaches. Every coach will be familiar with James Clear's work. Atomic Habits, he unpacks why people do anything, especially habits. So if you want to break a habit or if you want to form a new habit, he's basically suggesting that there's two phases, which is the, the why you would want to do it. You have a problem and you have a solution. I've tried to repurpose James's thinking here a little bit, but don't think this is my work, this is James Clear's work. To recognize that you've got a problem, there's always a cue and there's always a craving. So you've got this thing, aha, a trigger, well, I want this fixed or I want, I want, I want to overcome this or something, it's bugging you. And then the other side, you start looking for solutions. You have a response. So a response to that craving is you'll take an action and then the result of that action is a reward. Aha, a reward, great. So that, that makes it satisfying. I'm going to do it again. And the cycle continues between problem and solution. So we actually become like problem solution solving machines. Some of the conversations I have with my missus is all about, she's talking, tell me about a day. I'm straight into, let's solve that problem then. How can we fix this? Sometimes. You just got to know that humans work that way. So how could we take advantage of how people do anything? So if we're going to try to engineer referrals, we've got to understand people's behavior in the first place and follow that system so that we can help them think of us and refer people to us in that order. So James Clear suggests that if you want a cue, it's got to be obvious, something really obvious. So in my world, the copywriting world, should I say, if it was really obvious, let me put this in in red, write this on, pain. Pain is the most obvious thing. If you're always in pain, you can't ignore it. So let's look for pain. Craving, people only do anything for feelings. You act out of emotion and you justify what you've done with logic, especially when it comes to selling anything. So you buy a nice coat that you wanna wear because you think it'll look good, it'll make you feel good. And then you justify it by that it was on sale and you saved some money. So it's a ridiculous thing that humans do, but we do. In the copywriting world, we can replace craving. And here's, here's me just like uh, stealing James Clear's IP and then making it my own here. We can make a promise. Promise to give someone a feeling. Promise to make someone feel good. We're going to start getting somewhere with that. And then the response as we switch into solution mode, the response we want is, the, is a referral. What can we do to make someone send a client of theirs to us or send someone they know to us? That's the response. We've got to make it easy, like Jim says, in the copywriting world. It's got to be clear. And if you remember the, um, the aircon contractor, they had that little contact us button and then you had to fill in a form. It was really difficult to actually refer anybody to them or even themselves. So um, what we need is a plan. Sometimes three is the magic number for plan. A three step process is really easy, but also a one step process trumps that. So if you remember the, the plan that we had for the commercial property managers was basically call us and here's the phone number to do it you really easy and then the last thing the reward i like to call that the payoff so there we go there's now now we've got four ingredients for um engineering referrals a pain so that it's obvious like a trigger a promise of a feeling that we can use to fix it a plan that makes it easy 
and then the, the reward, the payoff that makes it satisfying. You still have to know who your clients are. And the pain promise plan payoff is true for direct marketing. If you're so um, I could have easily fixed the aircon contractors problem by saying, okay, well, what are the homeowners pain? What are the commercial property managers pain? But you've got to narrow into one person's pain because different markets have different types of pain. Um, same with the promise, the plan and the payoff. Yes, you need to fully understand your customer. But let's just say you already do understand your customer. That's when all the problems like costly, complicated and confusing apply. So what I'm suggesting is you just shift your focus. Don't, don't ignore that you have to do all that for your ideal clients. Definitely not. But then once you've got that ideal client of yours, it shifts to, okay, well, who has a whole list of people like that? Who owns a list of people like that? So my Econ contractor friend said, I would love to just work in commercial buildings. They're the most challenging jobs. They're the most profitable. I just want to get into people like those bu buildings. Okay, well, who has a list of people who owns those buildings? Because it's very difficult for you to build that list yourself. Where are you going to find commercial property building owners? Ah, well, commercial property managers actually work for those people. And I'll tell you what, the commercial property managers have their own set of problems that are different from the building owners. The building owners just want their rent paid. The commercial property managers want zero hassle so they can just get the commission. So what gets in the way of them is like, oh, when a building shuts down because the aircon breaks, world of pain for the property manager, the building owners on their back all the time. So if my, if my aircon contract friend can solve that problem for the commercial property manager, then they'll introduce them to their clients who are really the people they want. So who owns a list of people like that? The best thing about it is you don't have to just have one person. If you could identify 50 people who had your clients, say for example, another client I'm working with right now, he's a property buyer's advocate or agent, they call, a buyer's advocate they call him in Melbourne. He knows that commercial mortgage brokers have his ideal clients already. Someone comes to get a mortgage. Hey, I've got a mortgage. Okay, you can borrow this much money. Go away and find your house. The problem the mortgage brokers has is that homeowners, especially residential homeowners, they don't know how to buy a house. So they go. it goes on for months. The mortgage broker doesn't get the commission. Sometimes the deal falls through. Big pain for the mortgage broker. My friend now, our little property manager, property advocate's friend, he goes and makes sure that their clients get the property that they want, get the deal done, and then boom, get the thing settled so that the mortgage broker can get paid quicker. The property buyer gets the dream home, the mortgage broker gets the commission, and everybody gets what they want. That, that was the principle number one, other people's lists, right? And then principle number two was give as gain. How can you get what you want by giving other people what they want? I can help a commercial property manager get peace of mind by making sure their air conditions are not going to break down. Great. Okay. Well, I, I will refer my commercial property owner to you then so that I don't get that hassle. You know, here's a little formula so we can do it here. First thing is who is your target market? And if you think of our friends, the aircon contractors, it wasn't everybody. It wasn't residential homeowners. It wasn't commercial property managers. It wasn't all that big book of the people they could help. It was no, no, no. Let's break it all down to commit one single target market and focus on them at a time. Let's pick commercial property managers. What's their big pain point? Well, it hurts them when an aircon breaks down and has, they have to shut the building. That's painful. The promise is call us to arrange a com complimentary assessment of your client's air conditioning installation so it doesn't break down. And then you avoid all that pain and then we just make it easy. And then the payoff was peace of mind. I didn't show you the whole offer before. There was the three-step plan, which started with call now, and the step three was peace of mind. So if you wanted to do that, here's your copywriting formula. Number one, identify who your ideal client is, or at least one of them. Another big mistake we make is that, well, I, I can serve everybody. I, I'm trying to, I'll, I want this to appeal to everybody. I don't want to put people off with my offer. What I'm suggesting is it works way better if you just focus on one target market at a time the aircon contractor, let's have him focus on focus on commercial property managers just for now. Let's just Google who are commercial property managers in our area. Well, there's easily 50 people in the area he serves. So let's just approach them and make this offer to them and say, hey, commercial property manager, I can help you. So just a little framework that I use for the pain. Next time you meet someone who's struggling with this pain, or next time you meet somebody who's having this pain, promise to fix it. Next time you can't be bothered to cook a meal, I'll come to your house and prepare it for you and cook it in your own home, do the dishes and go away and leave you to it. All you have to do is give me a call, book it in and, and, and tell me which night you want me to come around. The payoff is you can stop spending your time and energy cooking and cleaning afterwards and start having a nice family meal together or something. That, that simple. How did that air conditioning contractor 
come to me when I'm an agency that markets for coaches? Well, one of my coaching clients referred them. So he just basically said, hey, aircon client of mine, you're struggling to get leads for your business and it's costing you a fortune in Facebook ads. Talk to Gary, he'll put you a referral offer together so that you can get leads much quicker. Even though I'm out there doing 80, 90% of my work for coaches, at any point in time, I can go to my coach clients and say, hey, do you know anybody who wants help with their marketing? Probably I'll be a bit more sophisticated than that, but basically that's the plan, right? If I suddenly wanted to target air conditions, I'd probably go to all the business coaches I know and say, hey, business coach, do you know any air conditioning contractors? Or more likely, I'll go, do you know any tradies? Because it's basically the same play. Let's say, go back to the B&I example, because handymen do really well at a B&I. Handyman could go to a domestic property manager and say, I'll, I'll come to your client's house and do a, an audit to make sure that uh, nothing's going to break down. So a handyman's ideal client would be probably domestic property owners, but impossible to find them. But real estate agents or property managers have them. So I guess it would start with like, who are your clients? Who has a list of your clients? What are their pain? What can you promise to, to fix for them? How do you make them feel better? What's the plan? How do you make it make it easy for them to to send those people to you and what's the payoff not for the clients you serve for the people who are sending you their clients so i showed you an example of the um aircon contractor my turn i'm going to wrap it up with a little offer for referrals so i'll read this out if you or anyone you know is a practice owner so now we know the difference between a business and a practice if you're running a practice and you're making a hundred thousand to a million dollars a year in profit and the pain you're not getting enough quality referrals because we know that one referral is worth 100 leads. You can handle five to 10 quality referrals every month. I'll create a campaign that delivers predisposed, pre-qualified and pre-sold prospects to you every single month. And it won't cost you a fortune in Facebook ads and you won't have to spend a lot of time doing content marketing. All you have to do is type refer me in the chat window and I can follow you up. I will know who's typed in refer me and I can follow you up. Um, and have a chat about that. What's the payoff for that? Stop wasting your time and money on business marketing strategies that don't work. It's costly, complicated, and confusing, as we've talked about, if you're using business marketing strategies to market a practice. So if you switch your thinking about it, you can start enjoying a simple and fun practice built on referrals. A practice where you do most of the work and all you do is wake up in the morning and say, who am I serving today? You have to do less. At the beginning, we were talking about the pain of sales calls, referrals are coming pre-sold they're pretty much already going to buy from you see the thing is we've got so many different types of people here and even coaches they also have different people you know we've already spoke to an hr hr manager coach um parent coaches fitness coaches all of these people have different serve different clients so the referral partners would be different so our job at my agency anyway is to figure out who your market is who would make a great referral partner and then what would make a great offer for that referral partner so they could send their clients or the people that they know your way i'm going to try and share the page that i built for our referral partner contractor it could be as simple as this for you we built a web page it was a, this was a page that hung off the website but really it could just be an entire website if you don't have one just with a big attention getting thing who is this for it's for commercial property managers and straight away they know what to do professional, honest, and reliable. That's well, that's basically what a commercial property manager wants out of a trader. Who gets the blame when the lazy traders neglect to maintain air condition properly? You do, and it could cost you your job. So the pain, this is the pain section of the offer. A whole bunch of, uh, when the usual contract won't even answer their phone. So this is going into the, the, the pain. My friend Dom here, if he can make those commercial property managers know that he understands their pain, then they're more likely to do business with them. So straight away, that's what you've, I showed you, avoid the cost and case of unexpected breakdown. Call now. And then there's a little bit more about what they do and how they do it. But it's all, we're all talking to the commercial property managers here. We're not talking to the building owners. We're not talking to the homeowners. It's all about the, the commercial property manager and the, the call to action is there, call now. And, you know, a little, little bit of authority and empathy there. We know what it feels like to be let down by unprofessional traders. So they're just talking to the property managers all the time. And then there's the plan section, three-step plan. Step And look at look how simple it is. Call us now. We'll give you a site report and we'll take, any care, take care of any urgent repairs while you're there. And then you get peace of mind. So it's basically the plan is that uh, do that and you'll get the payoff, which is really peace of mind, which I showed you about. There they are. And then there's a little bit of uh, a letter 
that explains the offer in detail, call now. So that was the basically the web page we put behind the marketing campaign. How do we reach commercial property managers? Really, really easily. There's a list of them on Google. We just Google commercial property managers in their area, and then we can send them a postcard, write them a letter, pick up the phone and call them, and that's it. We started with the idea that traditional digital lead generation online is costly, complicated, and confusing. Confusing, And the idea that if you went and marketed for referrals instead of directly for leads, it could be a lot more profitable, simple, and fun. My three key principles, which were use other people's lists. It's very expensive and costly to build a list of your own when there are people out there who already have a list of people. Give us gain, the BNI motto, right? Get what you want by helping others get what they want. Why we refer, we refer to feel good. I went over the idea of a business versus a practice. Example of the icon site, that's good. So yeah, businesses do things differently to, to practices in terms of marketing. We went over James Clear's habits, habit forming, why people do anything. And he has the cue, he has the craving, they do the response and then the reward. And I changed it up. I changed it to pain, make it obvious, promise, make it attractive, have a plan to make it easy and then be clear on the payoff so that it's satisfying. And then we've got the copywriting template that showed you how to uh, turn that, that for habit forming formula into, uh, into an offer. Yeah, that's it. Thanks everyone for your time and for your patience and listening. I can't wait to talk to you all separately and get into the referral offers for your business.